33 degrees as we begin the countdown to round 18 of 20 in this year's MotoGP World Championship. So far, so good on the weather front. We've had a full dry Moto3 and Moto2 race. Let's keep our fingers crossed that there's no rain disruptions in the 20 lap Petronas Grand Prix of Malaysia coming up very, very shortly. Matt Burton, Lewis Sotheby in the commentary box, Simon Crayfar down on the grid and in pit lane, as always, as we are around 35 minutes away from what will be the start of what really feels like a, a pivotal and hugely important Petronas Grand Prix of Malaysia with just 11 points, the narrow gap between reigning world champion Peko Banyaya, who slumped to a disappointing third place from pole position yesterday. His Super Saturday started off in great vein when he took his seventh pole position of the season, but difficulties with front tyre grip, and the distraction of a plastic lunchbox attaching itself to the front of his factory Ducati, of all things, are certainly not helping Banyaya's cause in yesterday's sprint as he looks for just a second win in the last seven Grand Prix to take to the always spectacular night lights of Qatar at the LaSalle International Circuit next weekend. Just 74 points will be left to fight for after today's Sepang Grand Prix. Will Jorge Martin wrestle back the lead in the World Championship? The top two men in the championship while well, they start alongside each other on the front row of the grid. Banyaya on pole, Martin second, Alex Marquez looking to complete the fairy tale double. The stage is set, all the ingredients are in place, Lewis, for another Sepang showpiece after we saw a great battle last time out with an Airbus Giannini and Pekka Banyaya. Well, we hope to see similar scenes to this in the Grand Prix this afternoon, and that's our two title contenders. first half of it before lap six or it all go bad and although his streak of sprint wins came to an end Martin of course had won five on the trot before we arrived in Sepang for the Tiso sprint yesterday it was still another crucial podium for him and a crucial result in terms of the championship. It was sprint podium number 11 for the 89. Too much out of their tyres. Alex Marquez was certainly not doing that yesterday. As always, the Tito sprint saw the riders go flat out from start to finish. This was the second attempt for Alex Marquez to take the lead from Pekka Banyaya. Banyaya, as mentioned, had led for the first half of the sprint. There was one initial attempt into turn 15 that Alex Marquez wasn't quite able to execute before that move into turn 9 took him through. It's a second sprint win, of course, of the year for Alex Marquez after his victory on the Saturday afternoon in wet conditions at Silverstone. But this was a first dry sprint win for Alex Marquez. And it puts him as a status of firm favourite amongst many, including the two championship frontrunners for the victory here this afternoon. Alex Marquez goes from the front of the second row in fourth. I did feel he could have potentially been on the front row of the grid and even pole position yesterday morning, but for some yellow flags that were brought out towards the end of qualifying after a crash for Luca Marini. That's an early preview of what the elder Marquez sibling will look like in Grassini Leathers next year. But as far as they're concerned today, the headlines are much more likely to be made by Marquez the Younger. He's tasted sprint victory on two previous occasions now, as mentioned, but he is still yet to take a full-length feature MotoGP win. Could today be the day? Fabio Quattararo is hoping to be involved in the battle for the top six today, but in the end yesterday, he was involved in a battle with Mark Marquez. Those two have had many a tussle before in MotoGP. They were battling for the lower reaches of the top ten in
Yeah, contact with Luca Marini through turn two, and in that moment, you just saw between Fabio Quattararo and Mark Marquez, which, as we then saw on the onboard shot, left a bit of a mark in the leathers of El Diablo. He drops all the way down the field on that first lap and only recovered up to 16th place. He does feel he has top six potential here today, Fabio Quattararo, and he was quickest in the warm-up session this morning. So if Quattararo can have a slightly better first lap than he did yesterday, keep an eye out for the factory Yamahas. They're quick here said an amazing result would be a top five a phenomenal result would be a podium finish but as lewis just mentioned he needs uh, certainly a, a more trouble free start than he had in the sprint and uh, peco bagnaia now bastini told the media that he was under no instructions no specific orders to sit and to protect Pekka Banyai in yesterday. Lunge on the inside of Banyai at any point in yesterday's 10 lap sprint and he did act actually as a perfect wingman as Brad Binder came on late, strong on the, the factory KTM. Bastianini coming back to some of his best form in fourth place. They do say, don't they? Teamwork makes the dream work. Uh, well, all those extra points that Bang and I gained for that hard-fought third place in the sprint prove, prove decisive uh, later on in the final record. Searing heat here in Sepang, just like the rest of the field. Let's get and I really wanted to because, first of all, talk us through um, your two riders, you know, Pole fighting his way back, Augusto more and more experience, and finally the exciting uh, prospect of Pedro Acosta coming to your team next year. Yeah, I think, I think uh, the first thing I would like to say because it's still very hot, hot uh, you know, to, to, re to welcome a world champion is always something great, which is... ...interesting next year, because we have the full uh, Moto2... ...and coming now is Pedro Acosta. We know how much... Uh, there is behind Pedro Acosta. I have, been, have I even been reading that he's the new Marc Marquez. I wouldn't, uh, you know, compare him to anybody else. Of the rider, the commitment, and uh, for sure it's going to be very, very interesting. And uh, yeah, the, the gas gas is definitely going to, to grow. And the two riders that we will have next year will be matching this, uh, you know, gas gas, get on the gas, young. Uh, Spanish brand, a uh, bit crazy brand. So, you know, I, I'm really, really looking forward. And uh, I've been talking to Pedro a bit this week, not too much because he wanted to stay focused on his championship. But uh, he seems a very smart person. And outside of the performance that we all see on track every
10 of 23. Hervé, always great to hear from you. Good luck this afternoon. Thank you, Simon. <laughs> Yeah, thanks to Hervé Poncheral, thanks to Simon Crowfire down in pit lane. The pit lane will open in 45 seconds time for the riders to head out onto the grid. Just looking out of our comment trucks window as it is starting to cloud over a little bit, but still plenty of blue sky up above us, so hopefully we will get away with a full dry MotoGP race. We can hear the crowd already are starting to make plenty of noise in the grandstand below us. The grass banks are starting to fill up as well. Everyone making sure that they get themselves plenty of shade here and what is still very, very hot conditions here in Sepang. And the heat is certainly being turned up in this MotoGP World Championship battle. Will this man be the new World Championship leader in around an hour and a quarter from now? Just saw him on screens. A happy 25th birthday to Mooney VR46 Ducati rider Marco Batsecki. Will it be indeed a happy birthday as Marco Batsecki tries to keep this a three ride up showdown for MotoGP glory? Who will add uh, their name, their plaque on the wonderful MotoGP World Championship winning tower? Marco Batsecki is a big ask. He's 83 points behind Bagnaia coming into this Petronas Grand Prix in Malaysia. Only 74 available in Qatar next weekend and at our season finale in Valencia in two weeks' time. So Marco Betsecki could find himself ruled out of title contention in about an hour's time or so at the end of this 20-lap Petronas Grand Prix on Malaysia. As the riders then head out onto the grid, Peko Banyaya, the world champion, with the number one plate fixed firmly on that Factory Ducati. Will he retain the title? It's never been done before by a Factory Ducati rider. Yesterday, of course, in the, the short, sharp burst of the Tiso sprint over 10 laps, everybody went for the medium front, medium rear tyre. Will the extremely hot conditions just popped out of our country box here in Sepang overlooking the start-finish straight and it does feel like the, the hottest conditions of the weekend so far. Some of the cloud that's just enveloping this uh, circuit about 50 kilometres south of Kuala Lumpur may be very welcome just to, to cool it down a, a notch uh, but will everybody go for the medium rear tyre? A few riders did feel like it had the endurance, it had the durability for the full 20 laps but we saw Pekka Banyaya certainly not particularly happy with his medium front yesterday and a lot of locking a lot of movement certainly confidence sapping in the sprint for the world champion so we'll keep a, a very close eye uh, on uh, some potential changes in these hot conditions here this afternoon yes back up on Yaya might well be convinced to go a little bit harder with his tires here today whatever happens whether they go for the same tires yesterday or not it will be a different kind of race to expect to a little bit more caution early on, a little bit more strategy involved. Of course, that was very much the story in Buriram where Jorge Martin dare not go too fast in the early stages of the race, perhaps with the memories of Phillip Island fresh in his mind, but he didn't want to go too hard too soon and take life out of his tyres. It's all well and good to be fast at the start of the race, but you need to be fast at the end of it. And you do wonder whether that might bring like the likes of this man, Enea Bastianini, who we're looking at from the rear-facing shot of Bagnaia into play. Bastianini so often a master of managing his rear tyre towards the end of a race. Of course, the big question for Bastianini is if he's got the pace to win the race, will he be allowed to? Well, will this be a, a shot that we'll see in the Grand Prix? Will Bastianini be sitting behind, acting as the perfect wingman for Pekka Bagnaia in the upcoming Grand Prix? Great to see so many Malaysian fans who flocked to this Sepang International Circuit. Bike and scooter parks looked packed to the rafters. This is always an incredibly uh, tense part of the season, particularly for those closely uh, involved, which certainly includes Ducati Lenovo team manager uh, Davide Tardotsi, who always looks like he hasn't got many fingernails left. I'm sure he's buying them close to bonus. Pekka Banyai comes to pole position. Let's get some pre-Malaysia Grand Prix thoughts from Davide, who joins Simon on the grid. He does. Like I always say, Davide, I enjoy hearing your thoughts, what's going to happen, who's going to be there. Also, I'm curious after Peko had a little bit of a struggle towards the end yesterday. I mean, he was still great, but he didn't 
perform exactly how you wanted late on. I imagine you've uh, done your homework overnight and made some possible changes. What do you expect? Yeah, we make a, a small change in the setup this morning that uh, Peko said that was uh, good. But yesterday happens that after five laps, he has a big drop uh, on the front uh, and uh, he suffered a big uh, chatter that uh, doesn't allow him uh, to enter the corner. And it was obvious that he was suffering some problems. Uh, it's obvious that yesterday he, he was able to recover the third place. But uh, while today, if it will happen again, uh, <laughs> it will be a big, big problem because I think that it will be difficult difficult to be on the 8-10 uh, riders. I think that uh, as yesterday it will be at least for Ducati and do KTM fighting for the podium, uh, maybe more, so it will be a very tough race. Thank you, Davide. Thank you. It is going to be a tough race. A big demand, a big stress on the body and the brain in these excruciatingly hot conditions. They would have looked at the data, they would have analysed the telemetry overnight made what they are hope are race winning changes uh, for world champion Pekka Banyo. Here's your starting grid then for the Patronus Grand Prix of Malaysia. Banyaya Martin and Bashini is your heavyweight front row from Alex Marquez, Luca Marini and Marco Betsecki. Betsecki of course as Matt mentioned celebrates his 25th birthday here today. On the third row of the grid we find the first of the factory KTMs. Brad Binder looking to overcome some of the problems with tyre grip that he had yesterday. Fabio Quattararo looking to overcome his tough first lap of yesterday from 8th. Maverick Vinales is 9th. Jack Miller starts 10th from Fabio Gian Antonio and Joe Anzaco. Alicia Spargo, who crashed four times on Friday, 13th from Augusto Fernandez and Frankie Morbidelli. Dran Mir, Paul Spargo and Raul Fernandez on the 6th row of the grid. Miguel Oliveira, 19th ahead of Mark Marquez. An equal low for him. P20 on the grid for the 8 times world champion. He has Takanakagami behind him. And a world superbike field to the back row of the grid with reigning two-time world champion Alvaro Bautista and Ika Laquona back there. Will anybody deviate from the medium rear tyre choice, which was the obvious and preferred pick over the half race distance in the sprint yesterday over 10 laps? What lies in store in terms of tyre choice? Always crucial here in the searing heat of Sepang. Let's get some thoughts from Michelin Motorsport manager Piero Paramasso, who joins Simon down on the grid. He does. Piero, after listening to the riders' uh, debriefs last night, uh, after the sprint half distance, it sounds like today's race is going to be a, a bit of a management race similar to Thailand. You know, can't go really hard from the start. Can you tell us your thoughts on that and what tyre choices there should be? Yes, we expect uh, that type of race, same as Thailand. So uh, every rider is with the medium front and medium rear, same as yesterday, because with this combination, they have the best feeling, good grip, but they have to manage about consistency. Today will be much harder compared to yesterday. Yesterday they can push it, but they already started to feel uh, movement in the front, some drop in the rear. So at one moment at the beginning of the race, in the middle or at the end, they have to manage a little bit. They cannot push uh, through all the race. And then, uh, yeah, then we'll see what happens at the end. But I think it will be a good race. Yesterday also they complained about uh, tire pressure, tire temperature going up in the front. And actually, it was not true. When we look at the data, this was not because of the tire pressure temperature went up, but it was because the front compound is too soft for this condition. But today, nobody want to go on the hard front because they want to, they prefer, they prefer the feeling from the medium, so they, they have to manage. But again, yes, the problem was the soft compound in the front. And uh, we see today because track condition is the same, it's 53, same as yesterday. So no big change. Uh, I hope they did some change on the bike. Interesting stuff, Piero. Thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thanks to Piero Tomasso. Thanks to Simon Cray for a special a pre-race ceremony taking place in front of the main grandstand here from the Zeppo youngsters. It's like a, a bit of a traditional Malay affair. Forward rolls on the tarmac. <laughs> Rather than the meat. Long time since either of us could move like that. Yeah, I could, a, a very long time since <laughs> I was able to move like that. Of course, we saw a spectacular pre-race show, didn't we, in Burram a couple of weeks ago. Piero Taramasso expects it to be another intense time management race. Well, if it's as good as Burram, <laughs> we'll have more of the same. Yeah, bring it on. We remind you, two weeks ago in Thailand, we had the fourth 
closest Premier Class podium in history, the seventh closest top 10, the second closest top 15, of course, which featured a certain South African star, Brad Binder, who is now courtesy of his third place in Thailand two weeks ago, South Africa's most successful Premier Class Grand Prix rider. Davide Tardotsi, the factory Ducati boss, he expects both Brad Binder and Jack Miller to feature prominently at the front of this Grand Prix. Well, let's see the thoughts of their team manager, Rebel Kating Factory Racing boss, Francesco Guidotti, who joined Simon. Francesco, it's so good, I imagine especially for you, but it's so good to see Jack back, not only in qualifying, but the sprint race all the way. I'd love to hear what you think he can do today. Um, he mentioned the, the different construction tyre feels better here after the, the heat ones. Also, can you tell us about Brad? Because what a job he did yesterday, and it sounded like he had a problem on the left side of the rear tyre. I can only imagine what he can do today without that problem. Uh, about Jack, uh, I mean, uh, I was not worried. I know that uh, Jack is like this, uh, and uh, I know how how is the level of uh, of the competition here. So as soon as you are not perfect, of course you are in the back. to manage tires, not just uh, the rear. The
Try to gather the shade, they've got the ice vests on.